Welcome back to La More La Musique. I'm so sorry that I haven't been seeing you guys around these parts as much as I used to in years past. I feel like it was standard for me to have a weekly video up at least every Sunday and there was a period of time several years ago when I was even doing two videos a week, Wednesday and Sunday. But as you know, my priorities are just more diversified now. I full-time parent my now almost two-year-old toddler. I have my podcast, I have Patreon. So I feel like I'm lucky if I get two to three videos a month up here. But I appreciate you for still being here. I hope that you're still enjoying the videos. And it ended up being a happy accident that I wasn't able to get my shiz together in time to do a review of the September Beauty Heroes box. Box featuring pie skincare because when I saw what the October box was going to be from Beauty Heroes featuring One Love Organics, I thought that they would actually make a nice combined review for a couple of reasons. Each of these brands are respective pioneers in the green beauty space. Pi started around 2007 and One Love Organics started in 2010. I kind of came of age in green beauty using both of these brands. And I feel like this is the year, 2020, that Beauty Heroes has stepped into working with and highlighting some of these, I guess you could call them slightly more mainstream beauty brands. But, but really what it means to me is that these are established brands. I have a lot of experience with both of them. And I learned after talking with Jeannie and Kevin at Beauty Heroes, I didn't know this, but both Pi and One Love Organics run their own EcoCert Cosmos certified labs. This is a very big deal and I think something that deserves a lot of lauding and recognition because I think we're used to seeing brands that are artisanally handcrafted in Eco Beauty, but also even a lot of brands in Eco Green Beauty are working with a third party lab and they're not necessarily overseeing the manufacturing process or they have different standards for ingredients. Pi and One Love Organics are really doing everything from soup to nuts with the production and distribution and our research and development. Like every arm of the brand is kind of centralized here and, they, and running your own production facility is a very expensive undertaking and most brands don't do it. So I kind of wanted to put that out as the overarching veneer of respect for these brands because I think that those of us that have been into eco beauty for a while, you know, I have been using eco beauty really for the last decade, know these brands very well. And I feel like we can get into this space of like, that's old hat. I know what that is. I want something new and exciting and interesting. But I think that there are always layers to explore, even with really well-established brands. And I appreciated the opportunity to revisit both of these brands and, and take a deeper look at why I have loved them and returned to products from each brand over the years on and off. Pi especially, I will say. They're such a reliable and trusted brand for people with sensitive skin, either that's their skin constitution or they're going through a sensitive skin moment or sensitized skin moment or pregnancy or postpartum. So I have a special relationship with Pi. I also appreciate One Love Organics because it's the brand that finally helped me truly, truly rehabilitate my skin through oil cleansing, facial oil cleansing. The vitamin B cleansing oil was the first oil cleanser I ever used and it was that one step in my skincare routine that totally transformed my chronically dry and dehydrated skin to being on a much better and more sustainable skin health trajectory. It also pull kind of auxiliary products in my routine. So for example, when I talk about the Pi Camellia and Rose Cleanser, I wanna talk about Ranavat. When we talk about the One Love Organics Eye Bright, I wanna talk about um, a number of other eye products that I've been using. 
So I'll detail both of the brands. The video might be a little bit longer because I am covering two boxes and I'm hoping that at the time that you have a chance to see this video that the One Love Organics box for October will still be available or you'll, you'll still be able to sign up for a Beauty Hero subscription for October. If not, I already know what November is going to be and I think it will be of interest to very many people. It's very interesting to me personally and a different perspective than what has been captured these last couple months in Beauty Heroes. As always, all the information you need throughout this video, if I reference podcast episodes or videos or products, everything will be listed and linked below, including a link to go sign up to become a Beauty Heroes uh, subscriber. They do three, six, and I believe 12 month monthly subscriptions, and I do believe that you can now do a month to month subscription. For example, the pie box, I'll just list individually each of the products below if you want to go scope them out. Other things that I talk about, I'll make sure to include below. As far as other announcements, I posted a what I slash we, my family, eat in a day video. It ended up being kind of a cooking video too. I made a Persian stew from scratch. I really highlighted uh, traditional and ancestral foods, at least portions of those philosophies in the video. And that was the September patron exclusive video that I posted in the very, very beginning of October. The patron exclusive podcast episode for this month for October brace yourself, <laughs> is an episode on childhood immunizations, aka vaccines. Can we even say, I feel like if I say that word, like something, a lightning bolt is gonna come, like strike me down. It's just a very, very polarized topic. I had gotten questions on and off and I felt comfortable sharing where I'm at with that topic, the direction that we have been in, the direction that we're going, my own history with immunizations, vaccinations. So it's all there. It's an hour long. It's very candid. If you're interested in that topic, I'm sure you can understand why I would put it on Patreon. I think that's it. Let's dig in and start talking about the September Beauty Heroes box featuring pie. Okay, so let's talk about the products in the box. This came with a full-size 4.9 fluid ounce bottle of the Lightwork Rosehip Cleansing Oil. A huge, I've never seen a bottle this big of this. I've always had the smaller one in the pump dispenser. 6.8 fluid ounce bottle of the Camellia and Rose Gentle Hydrating Cleanser. And then it also came with a double-sided organic dual effect sensitive skin cloth and a little sample of the Kukui and Jojoba Bead Skin brightening exfoliator. I have had the pleasure of trying everything in this box in years past. In fact, I have already been working through a light work rosehip cleansing oil. You can see I'm almost done with it. At the outset, conceptually, I really liked this box because it felt like a good box of staples. Proper cleansing of the skin is such a foundational part of a skincare routine, however minimal or maximal you want to be with your skincare, proper cleansing, whether it's a one and done oil cleanser, this does emulsify, or if you don't really wear makeup or you're having a day where you're inside and you're not wearing SPF or makeup and you just want to do a creamy cleanser to cleanse the face or a morning cleanse, this just felt like such a great box of staple foundational products, which to me aligns really well with September back to school, even though the world is not normal right now. It's still, September has that feel of like, let's get our back to school shopping done. Let's get in a routine. Let's do the thing. You know what I mean? So this box felt really properly, appropriately helpful and, and curated. The Lightwork Rosehip Cleansing Oil, this retails for 49 this size of the cleansing cream retails for 69. The 69 also includes the face cloth and then the exfoliator 10 milliliter travel size is $10. So when I read a little bit about the history of the light work cleansing oil, the, the name for this product, light work, the idea behind it is that cleansing the skin should basically not be a lot of work, that it should be easy to do, kind of no fuss, but very effective, beautiful experience. It's organic olive, castor, and rosehip seed oils. Rosehip CO2 extract is the power player. 
uh, delivers a really high concentration of different omegas. It does emulsify. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever heard me talk at length about my preference in a cleansing oil or balm, but my personal preference is actually for one that does not emulsify. I prefer to have some residue left on the skin. I prefer to always use a warm cloth. To that end, I use this to remove eye makeup, actually. I do two pumps, massaged into my eyes, and removed with a Marley's Monsters reusable cloth round, and it's amazing for that. If I'm having a day where I don't have the wherewithal to use a cloth, or I do just want to massage something quickly into my face and jump in the shower and rinse it off, this is perfect. I have also tried removing this a with a cloth and you can, but I almost feel that for all of the rinsable cleansing oils and balms on the market, it really doesn't make sense to remove them with a cloth, to be honest with you. They just kind of pull and drag and you just don't, they're just much better rinsed off because that's how they're designed to be used. I will also say for a long time, I had been using the Audacity Blue Aqua Micellar Water Equivalent specifically to remove lip product. So this is like kind of how crazy sometimes I think it's also obviously I test a lot of products for Lamore. I was using that big bottle of Hawaiian Punch Blue micellar water from Audacity just to remove lip product. I was not comfortable really using it anywhere else on the face. I have since started using this to also remove lip makeup and it's perfect. So this is basically it's, it just serves a makeup removal purpose. If I want to use it all over the face, I absolutely can. And if you're good with rinsable cleansing oils, that's your preference. I think you'll probably love it. It's pretty unscented in my opinion. Um, the texture is really nice. The pump is incredible. I just wish more brands did pump dispensers of things because it just it facilitates the use so much easier than twisting off a cap or dipping in or pouring or, or what have you. So the Camellia and Rose Gentle Hydrating Cleanser, I've gone through many, many uh, full size, not like jumbo size, but full size uh, bottles of this. In the past, I'm sure if you have been watching my videos in years past, you will have seen this mentioned. Um, if I've done any sort of cleanser lineup, it's probably in there or past skincare routine. For a very long time, this was my absolute favorite creamy cleanser. Now, I really, for a second cleanse, I'll use a gentle gel cleanser. For example, the Marie Veronique gentle gel, I absolutely love. Or something like Earthwise Marshmallow cleanser. Why am I blanking on the name of that? But that's almost kind of like a very gentle foaming type of cleanser. But my preference, especially in the fall and winter, is for a creamy cleanser. So I am a no pretty normal skin type. I can get dry and dehydrated, but I can't do really aggressive cleansers, you know, that a more oily or combination skin type may crave or want. So a creamy cleanser is always what makes my skin feel the best for a second cleanse in the winter. And I still love this one so 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 much i in my opinion it kind of has like a almost like a lemony sort of yeah to me it smells vaguely lemony um the texture is beautiful it feels so so good going on it leaves the skin very plump very moisturized i absolutely love it and then i found this one this was a past beauty heroes hero product i believe the ranavat box was january or february so it was one of the first beauty heroes boxes of 2020 and i fell in love with this one very similar though some of it just kind of depends on what your skin is doing or if you have a scent preference. Um, the Ranavat is more floral, kind of. It's that kind of cool rose scent that permeates Ranavat and it's a little bit thicker. So this one has sesame oil, which is a bit of a heavier oil. And I find in the winter time, this is that tiny bit more moisturizing than this. This is a very good all season creamy cleanser in my opinion, but if you get really, really dry in the winter time um, and you're looking for a creamy cleanser, this is gonna give a tiny bit more moisture to the skin, but I don't have a bad thing to say about this. I've loved it, I continue to love it. I think this size will last you a year probably if you keep it in the shower. I would venture to guess partners would probably love this. If you have a teen in your life washing their face, they would probably love this. 
Um, this is a really nice kind of shower style packaging. This is sweet almond oil and shea butter, which gives sort of the creaminess. It has Damask Rose Auto and the Camellia oil, of course. They say that you can use the cloth on this to either massage the product into the skin. So there's two sides to it. There's this kind of soft terry side and a muslin side. So you can use the muslin side if you wanna do kind of a very gentle buffing with the cleanser on the skin, and then you can wipe the cleanser away with the soft terry side. So that would be to give yourself a little bit of manual exfoliation. They used 100% organic cotton to make this very, very nice addition in the box. Now I have also in the past used the Kukui and Tohoba Bead Brightening Exfoliator. In fact, I at one point had a full size of this. At the time when I still was flirting around with having a physical exfoliator in my life. So I will say that I have since pretty much disavowed most physical exfoliators for, ha for having any kind of mainstay foundational place in my skincare routine. I will try them for projects or box reviews or things like that. That said, if you are more sensitive, if you tend to get maybe a little bit of redness kicking up in the skin or irritation from a physical exfoliant, I'm talking something like Recently, I used the H's for Love Pollen Face Mask, which is very similar to something like May Lindstrom Clean Dirt or just a little bit too abrasive on me personally. A jojoba bead exfoliator is a good bet for someone that doesn't like a lot of aggressive exfoliation or wants, wants a physical scrub, but wants something that's going to be you know, not scrubby, basically, like physical exfoliant without being scrubby. Gentle polish that refines without irritation, uh, formulated with fine biodegradable jojoba beads that gently buff away the feeling of uneven texture. So apricot oil, avocado oil, kukui, jojoba beads, glycerin. I didn't have a problem with this. It's a little take it or, or leave it for me personally. If I want to exfoliate, there's just other, other products that I'm going to reach for. Uh, however, I love that they included it because it's just something else you get to try from the brand. I am currently using and wanted to draw your attention to the Pi Instant Calm Redness Serum um, sea Aster and Wild Oat. This one actually came in a past Boxwalla box. It's this kind of very lightweight, creamy serum, almost kind of like a thin glue uh, is like kind of the way I think I described it. I did a whole podcast review actually of um, the box that this pie serum came in and I'll include it in the show notes below if you want to go hear more and I talked a bit about my experience with pie over the last decade really I've tried probably 75% of the brand there's really nothing that I have ever disliked there's things that I think are a little bit better for my skin personally I also just got in the recent detox market gift with purchase bundle which I sadly think is already sold out very very quickly um, they included pies perfect balance blemish serum with copaiba and zinc so really really nice as well now the thing I will say that I just found out. In fact, I just learned this from Jeannie. Pi recently revealed a whole brand updating. They renamed some products. They redesigned their products. I went and had a look at the website. Um, the packaging, new packaging had launched right after the box, but the cleansing oil is in a slightly redesigned bottle. Um, the design on the bottles of things is different. It actually, their new aesthetic is really, it's definitely kind of a more modern interpretation. I felt like their style was really very classic, but they've kind of updated the font and included some different um, illustration type of graphics on the bottles. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Strange Bird, if any of you know that brand. And Strange Bird reminds me a bit of Naked Music, which is a music house music label, San Francisco house music label from the early 2000s. So I am feeling the new vibe. I, I really quite like it. Uh, so go have a look at the website. 
the pie is really really wonderful for pregnant and postpartum women i used their stretch cream system when i was pregnant in 2018 really really enjoyed it uh, very much i've gifted that to pregnant women in my life as well i just have a lot of respect for this brand they were such a cornerstone for me for so many years i love the beauty heroes is carrying them and i just think that they're really really wonderful staple products oh i should have done this in the beginning but i just got really excited to start talking about the products they are based in london if i didn't say that manufactured based in london the lab is based in london the founder of the brand is a woman named sarah brown who has new zealand roots which i didn't know and pie actually translates to the word goodness in maori which is a nod to her new zealand roots so i appreciated learning that bit of history about the brand i think i had never really questioned the name or, or why it was named pie enough of my ode to pie let's move on to one love organics okay so the products in this box are let me see what i think maybe these are all three hero products there's not a definitive hero product and sidekick this month the gardenia and tea antioxidant body serum in this very unique spray bottle the only other product in eco beauty that i've ever seen packaged like this is the cv skin labs rescue and relief spray i'm having pamela friedman the person behind cv skin labs on the podcast so you'll get to hear a lot more about that brand if it's not already out at the time you're seeing this video if it's not out it'll be out soon okay the botanical d moisture mist and this is a newly launched product. I'm not sure if it launched in the Beauty Heroes box, but it's definitely a new product for One Love Organics. It's the Love and Eye Bright Eye Serum. And this is beautiful ballet petal pink. I was very, very taken with this. And I was probably the most excited. I've tried both of the other products, but I had never tried this. So the founder, I'll do this up front this time. The founder of One Love Organics is a woman named Suzanne LaRue. She's from Georgia. Her EcoCert Cosmos facility is based in Georgia now. They were founded in 2010. And I was on Beauty Hero's blog and there was this little blurb that I thought, that I want to read to you because it really highlights for both of the brands, Pi and One Love Organics, why running your own Cosmos certified lab is such a big deal. Building a lab to the Cosmos standard requires an intricate level of detail that involves breaking down complex machinery for cleaning, intense ingredient scrutiny, regular site visits, and so much more, down to how the lab manages pest control naturally and strict guidelines on recycling. But Suzanne admits that having complete assurance control and visibility of what goes into the bottle and having a third party certify that what One Love Organic stands for is true is worth it. I thought that was just a really nice overview and encapsulation of why what these two brands are doing in their own respective ways is really maybe more than meets the eye. The Gardenia and Green Tea, I've actually gifted a bottle of this before to my mom who loves Gardenia. It's like one of her favorite fragrances and she was on this big kick a couple of years ago, I remember. I was trying to find her a Gardenia perfume and then I came across this and I gave her a bottle, but you know, my mom lets Thing. she's like she'll kind of look at things for a long time takes her a long time to use things so i don't know if she ever even used it but i did give it to her so this four ounce bottle retails for 39 mostly sunflower seed oil green tea oil and pumpkin seed oil i love pumpkin seed oil by the way i think that pumpkin seed oil in a body oil oil formulation lends to it feeling very lightweight and quickly and easily absorbed which this is it's definitely not a heavy body oil like for example the bathing culture body oil which came in may i love that body oil very different than this though and i was talking about on the live do live streams every friday morning live get ready with me's every friday morning on patreon i was talking about how i thought that this was kind of an interesting pick for october because to me the gardenia smell here is really a very spring or summer type of product and the bathing culture oil that came in the may beauty heroes box is much richer and layered and um, a little bit spicier and kind of has some more depth so to me that's more of like a fall winter type of body oil i personally think this would have been better suited to a box 
earlier in the year during a different season, but I'm just kind of splitting hairs. Um, it is gorgeous nonetheless, but it is very lightweight and absorbs very, very quickly. It has this little lock button that you depress right there to activate the nozzle and just spritzes out really, really easily. Oh, it is really nice. I don't have any gardenia scented products in my canon of, of what I use. And it's definitely pretty unique. It reminds me a bit of, um, I don't know, I feel like Whole Foods carries a gardenia perfume, but really, really, really beautiful. The vitamin D botanical mist. So I have actually tried this uh, when it first launched years ago. I tried it and I think that they have changed it a little bit. It didn't used to have the rose scent that it now has. Aloe, alpine rose, geranium, safflower, olisomes, shiitake mushroom. It did always have mushroom in it, I remember. And I remember being very drawn to it because of that. And this was like, I don't know, four or five years ago, probably. This is a best-selling product for them. And they even consider it more of a lightweight liquid moisturizer that you are able to mist rather than like a toner, for example. And I agree, it, do it definitely does feel like it has a bit of a heavier molecular weight. It leaves the skin really plump. The, it, it's, it's weird. This is one of those products that you use it and then you kind of keep thinking about it. And then you're kind of gravitating to using it the next time you're around it. You know, I have a number of mists right now. I'm using Bathing Culture Golden Hour Hydrosol. I'm using Earthwise Cystus and Moonlight. I'm using an Osha Sea Mineral Mist. And I find myself during the day, I reach for this. I really like the effect that it gives. Um, it's kind of as moisturizing to the skin as something like Maya Chia's The Optimist. Um, it has that kind of heavier molecular weight type of feeling. This two ounce bottle retails for 39 and I'll plow through this within a couple of months probably with the way that I'm using it. Okay, and then the product I was most excited for, the Love and Eye Bright. So this 145 milliliter stainless steel roller ball retails for 39. So I actually think that that's a wonderful price point. I think the price point of all of One Love Organics is actually very accessible for green beauty. That's why it feels like a very nice entree for people, people that just might not have as big of a budget for eco beauty, but still want products that have a lot of integrity are very intentionally formulated and effective. I was excited to see this because Eyebrite, I think of very fondly as an ingredient. Eyebrite is a flat flowering herb that has been used medicinally to promote eye health, control inflammation, and quell redness and irritation. Eyebright was featured, or it's often highlighted in my beloved Infiore V Clear Supreme. So mine is completely empty. I love, love, love this eye cream. Obviously not the point of this video, very different price point. This jar of cream is $185. It'll figure into an Infiore review that I'm planning for mid-November or in advance of whatever holiday gift with purchase they might be planning this year. But um, I used this up within six months, AM and PM use almost exclusively, and this is a wonderful product. Definitely an investment, so more if you're, you know, veering towards the more mature demographics, late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. Beautiful product if you're just getting started with a skincare routine in your teens, 20s, 30s. Um, but I have found it to be beautifully moisturizing, but also light enough to use in the AM. So I've been experimenting with this AM and PM. It also has astaxanthin, green tea oil, meadow foam seed, oil, moringa seed, and sea kale. Surprisingly, it does not have green coffee bean in it. Um, I feel like every, every single eye serum or oil product has green coffee bean oil in it. This one does. Almost all of them do because it's a very no, well-known um, firming and depuffing and just kind of like moving type of ingredient. Uh, but look, I think this is really easy to use. I find myself reaching for it because it's just a quick roller ball. A couple other things that I wanted to show you. I have been testing quite a few eye products recently, hair adjustments, not a video if I'm not obsessively fidgeting with my hair. Um, so I'm almost done with this bottle of the Blue Alchemy Eye Oil Serum. Again, also very, very easy to use because it's in a roller ball, but I actually prefer for ease of use the roller ball that's in this one. It's bigger, it glides a little bit easier. So I find myself actually reaching for this a little bit more than this. 
um, Earthwise Passion, like I said. I do really like this. However, I do think it's somewhat cumbersome to use a dropper. So I kind of, I wish maybe eventually Earthwise would consider doing a roller ball or something for this but gorgeous essential oil free wonderful for sensitive skin not too heavy not too light but i would say slightly richer than this i think and then i'm also using oh the sahajan ayurvedic blend radiance eye cream this is very 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 lightweight so if you are someone that gets very prone to milia or you already have oily under eyes this is a really really lightweight eye cream very neutral smelling i've been trying some more sahajan products they're an ayurvedic skincare brand that i really love so extremely lightweight cream and then on the opposite end of the spectrum the heaviest product i've been trying is the in light under eye revive eye balm so this is not for the faint of heart um I am testing it judiciously because I did have a little milia spell somewhat recently, but I was also in the span of a couple weeks trying like five new eye products. So I'm kind of pedaling back and trying to not throw everything in the kitchen sink under my eyes because turns out I can get milia if I overdo it. Could also be the result of bringing up products that are very rich for the face too close up around the eye so i need to be more careful about that so very very rich under eye balm you need like the tiniest amount um but of course it's in light so it's stunning so i would say that this is on the medium to lighter end definitely light enough for during the day a totally unscented i think it's solid I think it's really really nice so the only other thing that i could close out on is yes okay i, I knew these were in here i recently got some of these uh from one love organics they were in a detox market box not that long ago i mean i would be so embarrassed if people could see what's happening down here I really need to get organized or it's going to look like a beauty hoarder situation so i have the one love organics botanical bee enzyme cleansing oil so this is 100 percent a cult long time favorite eco beauty product and i repurchased it so many times i used it over and over like i said it totally changed and rehabilitated my approach to my skin it has a, like a pineapple coconut scent and i think just where i've been at i'm preferring things that are more herbal more rich just kind of a, a different vibe but this is definitely such an amazing entree to oil cleansing if you like a rinsable cleansing oil it really is wonderful now the one that surprised me is actually their i had never tried this i tried it for the first time their botanical a facial cleanser it has some neem in it vegan grade alpha hydroxy acid and beta hydroxy acids work synergistically so this one smells a bit like grapefruit from what i remember so the the vitamin a why it's called botanical a derived from moringa oil and so that must impart some vitamin a to the skin which i'm down with because i'm not really into synthetic retinol or vitamin a yeah smells like grapefruit i loved the experience of using this however it's on the more aggressive end for me personally however if you want a resurfacing cleanser I totally recommend this this would be a second cleanse you would do a first cleanse with the vitamin b a second cleanse with the vitamin a you'd be good to go it's like the a more um, intense equivalent of these two this is definitely more sensitive skin oriented and this i just i think of these as being good for people that have skin in their 20s and 30s some combination skin some some oiliness i actually have the easy does it foaming cleanser in Cobb's shower he's been relegated or of his own choosing he uses a, a little shower stall in the basement he just has let me pretty much do spread out in our upstairs master bathroom anyway and then i also have the botanical sea body oil which is slightly richer and i think if i'm remembering correctly 
yeah, pineapple coconut smell as well. Richer than the gardenia and tea. People like this in the colder months if you live in a cold climate. Around like spring break time or like March, April, to me those are the most difficult months of the year. Very, very nice if you're on the tail end of winter and like really trying to psychologically get yourself through till warmer weather. Or looking forward to a vacation it's actually a really nice product for that so i just wanted to highlight these things because i have them around i've used them i've tried them and just give kind of some general thoughts and comparisons between the pie cleansers the one the organic cleansers now i'm just rambling because i don't want to stop talking about beauty products <laughs> Thank you guys so much for choosing to spend your time with me. I'm sure I forgot something, but please check the description bar for any additional information. I can't wait to see you again soon. A Night for Green Beauty 2019 Awards will be my next video. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Uh, please come over to Patreon to access all of the bonus extra work I do over there. It's patreon.com slash l'amour et la musique. You can search your Purposes Beauty in your favorite podcast player to listen to my weekly podcast. New episodes come out every Monday. You can also stream every episode on l'amour et la musique.com. Please come say hi in the comments. I would love to chat with you and hear about your thoughts or experience with either of these boxes what you might like to see from beauty heroes in the future, what's interesting to you right now about beauty, what you're looking forward to, what some of your favorite products were of the year. I'm also planning, already have started to plan my best of beauty 2020 video. Okay, I think that's it. I am going to bid you adieu, wishing you a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.